What's up, y'all? This is Chitty Bang, and I'm on the Renegade Millionaire Show, the podcast that profiles entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. Join us as we go one-on-one inside the hearts and minds of some of our generation's best and brightest. And now, introducing your host, my friend, Sun Group Wealth Partners Managing Director, CNBC and Forbes.com contributor, Winnie Sun. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's Winnie Sun here, your host for the Renegade Millionaire Show again. Thanks for tuning in. We are tuning in here from beautiful Los Angeles, Venice Beach, you guys. I'm Managing Director, Financial Advisor for our Sun Group Wealth Partners here in beautiful Southern California, and I welcome you to the show. Hey, just real quickly, I don't know if you've seen this, but I just saw a study on Statista. Dot com, which is S-T-A-T-I-S-T-A dot com, that said over 80 million people in the United States right now are using the I- Apple iPad. And did you know that number is expected to grow to 85 million in 2016? That might seem kind of like a big number, but not really, because Apple also sold over 590 million new iPhones between 2007 and 2014, because actually the iPhone hasn't been around prior to 2007. And in just the first quarter of 2015, they sold 74 million iPhones. I don't know about you, but I love my iPhone 6 Plus. I'm like the unofficial, uncompensated ambassador of the Apple 6 Plus. But that segue, I just want to give you that statistic because today's guest is my good friend, Dave Basuto. Mm-hmm. Basulto. Basulto. Mm-hmm. I'm working on it. Um, and Dave and I met purely by accident, actually, just a couple weeks ago. Because I got to tell you, oh, my gosh, when you see, and I'm going to make sure that this is posted, you know, there'll be links um, for this on the uh, the rundown on our, our Renegade Millionaire show here. And also, we're going we're gonna to push out a quick video that will give you an idea of just how amazing his product is. Because really, it's more than we can even talk about via radio you're making me blush we should because you're you're one amazing guy oh my goodness seriously and with that so some of you may not have not heard of dave so let me so if you can indulge me just a little bit i'm going to read through his bio because there's just so much stuff i don't want to miss so dave is certainly our so cowboy uh he went to south pasadena high school and then he attended San Diego State University and studied business he even worked on wall street which i don't know why he did that because (laughs) Who wants to work? No, okay. But <laughs> he left Wall Street and he became an actor featured in films and TV. He produced a film called 18 Shades of Dust with Danny Aiello. And he produced feature films for Icon Entertainment and Lifetime Television. He's won numerous awards at film festivals, including the Toronto Film Festival. Kind of a big deal. In 2004, Dave even started a podcast called Filmmaking Central, where he discusses the trials and tribulations of being an independent filmmaker in Hollywood. That's probably not such a fun thing, but let's talk about that in the future. 250 episodes is what he did and thousands of downloads later in Filmmaking Central and continues to be one of the biggest influencers in independent filmmaking. 2004, he directed his first digital movie called Death Cliché, all shot using a Panasonic DVX100 camera. I don't even know what that is. But he (laughs) edited it himself, Adobe Premiere Pro, on his laptop. He sold a movie later to... A little group called Netflix and Blockbuster. Um, But the thing that I was most impressed and and why I just love Dave is (laughs) he also teaches media arts and animation at, or he did, uh, at San Marino High School in 2010. Where he made his own footage and projects with his students. And he's just, he just realized that, you know, although they're young, um, I don't know if this is caffeine, but they all seem to even have shaking hands, even... (laughs) even at that very young age, with even with the steadiest hands. So with that, he said, you know what? We've got an opportunity here. So he sketched the design on iPad using uh, the app called Paper and created the iographer. What is the iographer? We will find out. He's a, he found a mechanical engineer in a cool place called South Africa and had them create this for $200. And then he went and used a Shapeways 3D prototype printer and printed one for $200. So simply one 
um, kind of scrappy guy you are, Dave. I am scrappy. And my wife will tell you that. Yeah? <laughs> and you're like the jolly happy guy, too. You're the guy that, like, every party you just want to hang out with because he's, he's just nice. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. You know, you're just nice. So, really cool. So, this iographer is, like, I can't tell you last time that I got so excited. And those of you who know me that know that I'm pure geek inside and out. And this thing why I gave you the Apple stat in the beginning is the iographer hooks up and makes our iPhones and iPads and iPad minis into, like, the coolest thing on the planet. And when you hang out with Dave, you become instantly cool. <laughs> so, Dave, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Winnie. That's amazing. You're just so cool, and I'm so glad to be here. Oh, goodness. No, I, I am, like, in awe of your presence <laughs> because you have done so much in such a young I mean, oh, you're still I'm not so young, young, believe me. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> just hit 50, and, uh, you know, that's, whew. Better do, something, better do something exciting, I said, so here we are. Yeah, well, <laughs> what you create is, is, is absolutely incredible. So you have one in front of us. For those who are listening to us who can't see it, can you kind of explain and detail this for us? <laughs> so my big dilemma when I was teaching was that I needed uh, my students to film with steadier hands, uh, with better audio, with lighting, with lenses, and I couldn't find a support rig uh, for iPads or iPhones um, in the classroom. So... I started designing it, like you said, and sketched it up, found a, a mechanical engineer. We made a prototype, and it was something that really worked. It was for the iPad Mini. Um, I found it was literally when the Mini first came out, and I really thought, God, the Mini was the tool of champions because of the price point. Um, schools now around the country that were not as affluent as our school um, could have media programs. Uh, they can they can have a, um, a photography class, animation, editing, you name it, can be done with the iPad. So I was just a big proponent of it. So I created this device, and we were using it in the classroom, and everyone loved it. And um, some of the kids said, "Hey, you should do this thing called a Kickstarter." And I was like, "What is that?" So yeah, what's know. a Kickstarter? Sounds right. cool. Sounds cool. Okay, I looked into it, and I go, "Hmm, do I want to go into this? Do people, you know, what if they don't like it? I'll be really depressed, you know." So um, we did a Kickstarter, and um, how awesome! Your kids helped you with this. They, they, that, then that's what I loved about teaching is you kind of keep on the pulse of what the future is and, and stuff, and we can talk about that later. Um, but um, so we did the Kickstarter, and uh, and we raised um, seventeen thousand dollars. Is all I wanted. I should have asked for a lot more, but <laughs> <laughs> <Looking> <laughs> um, back. and it was wonderful. Forbes wrote a rig, uh, an article on me um, on on being a teacher and stuff, and, and developing this, and which is really funny because, like you said, I started out on Wall Street. Never did I think I would be in Forbes, you know, ever. But <laughs> here I am. You know. um, this so that is was a much kinda, more organic. This way. is better. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Um, and so lo and behold, you know, this is two years ago, and um, I retired from teaching in December, and and we're about to go big box re- retail in uh, in Best Buy in uh, in next month. So very cool and perfect in time for Christmas. In time for Christmas and the summer and all kinds of fun awesome. stuff. You know. Yeah, I'm so excited and thank you uh, for setting me up because I can only imagine this thing basically uh, turns your iPhone, in my case, iPhone, mm-hmm. into a real tool. Right? A, a, a big production tool. I mean, you, the iPhone 6 Plus is such an amazing tool and I, I'm with you on it. I'm just like fanatical about it. Um, not only the big screen, but the camera that's on it, the 240 frames per second slow motion. Um, you can literally film a movie on it. You can stream live video anywhere you want. Um, so the cases that we make um, have handles on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, they allow so for steady shooting. You can put it on any standard tripod. Uh, the top of it has what are called cold shoes, so you can um, attach any camera-ready um, microphone or, or lighting or anything you want. Uh, and then the front has what's a 37 millimeter thread, so you can put on wide angle lenses, telephoto lenses, wow, etc. That's so, a game changer there. So you can really do some fun stuff with it, and um, you know we really th- we want people to make better videos, is what it is. That's incredible. Well, it certainly does because I did buy a, a I think it was a, a clip on lens, and it never seemed to work right. But I can see how this would just keep it really steady. And to be able to have this tool, because all of us have our phones on us, Mm -hmm. but we don't always have, like, a video camera with us. I love our 4K camera, but it's just not practical to hold in your purse, right? And, and yeah, taking it around with you, you know, you never know where you are where something might be something you need to film, you know. Mm -hmm. It just... 
you meet someone on the street, oh, my God, that's that person. Hey, let me pull this out. We're on Periscope really quick. Bam, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. So, and we try to make everything compact and affordable is a big thing. Well, that that surely is what it is. And I'm excited that you did that because it can see so many normal people, like your students and parents and families. Everybody will be able to afford this very practical item. But now our video... uh, will be so much better. So next time you see any video on YouTube, it won't be shaking all over the place. Right. And right? And, and that also, I mean, the, the audio is sometimes so bad. And That's just by true. adding to some simple microphones that are low cost, um, you know, you can really improve the quality of your sound, you know, sound more professional, you know. That's incredible. I mean, this is why I think this thing's going to sell out like crazy at Best Buy. I, it might be I a little mean, insane. I, I, so Best Buy is going to exclusive for the iPhone 6 Plus, so you have to go to Best Buy to get it. Um, but they also are carrying our, our Air 2 and our Mini cases um, with two lenses, so it's a kit and it's 99 bucks. So That's incredible. It's pretty inexpensive. And I just saw you, you showed us the one that's built for the GoPro. GoPro and I, the other, like you were saying, mm-hmm. it could work with the Sony um, sports cameras that we have. So, wanted? you know, we, I just like to keep tinkering in my house and, <laughs> and I design things and have fun because I'm around all these cameras all the time and I'm like, God, this is a really cool camera. But I, for one thing, as I turn 50 and you see I'm wearing glasses right now, I have to wear my glasses all the time. <laughs> I don't want some little tiny LED on the GoPro. It's just not workable for me. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it's so unstable, you have to really, I don't want to carry around selfie sticks. And in fact, they outlaw them now everywhere. So, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, Disneyland just said no more no, selfie sticks. They're so. dangerous. Um, so I thought, God, I'm going to make a real rig for this um, mm-hmm. that I can put action cameras on. And GoPro is certainly the leader. Um, and so we designed this and we went to the NAB show this year and just had it as a prototype. And people went fanatical about it. That's incredible. I need to order this now. When can I have it? I'm like, uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're in the process of building the mold right now. And, and it, it, what basically what it does is it allows you to mount your GoPro um, onto this device. It's, it's a, a, like a, I'll call it a, a rig, a, car- a, a case. Mm-hmm. And once it's in there, um, it has big handles on both sides once again. So you, now you get a nice steady shot. You can put it on tripods once again. And of course, on top, you've got room for your, um, your mic. monitor mic. So in this case, we added a, a really nice monitor. So a nice big wow. six inch monitor. So I can really look at what I'm shooting. Incredible. And the GoPro shoots, you know, 4K, as we said. And so, I mean, you've got some good, uh, great little camera, and I'll make some good videos with it. Wow, that's incredible. So I it's mean, called the Iographer Go, by the way. Because the I was, Iographer I, Go, I, I was not uh, very inventive. but <laughs> Yeah, add me to the wait list on that one, right? And I'm sure all of you who are listening, you're going you're gonna to definitely want to do that as well. That's incredible. And, and when I saw this device, so I, I got to tell you how Dave and I met. About a couple weeks ago, actually, he was being interviewed from a colleague of mine on another show. And they came out with this device, and they were videotaping me and what I thought about it. I was just thinking, this is incredible. I can't. I said, I want to meet the guy who created this. <laughs> and lo and behold, there was Dave. I was like, oh, my goodness. And since that, Susie and I have been talking to everybody about this device. But the thing that I th- find very refreshing is it's at a very touchable price point. That is not a, 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 an item where, I mean— I, I'm sure you did the same thing. When I bought my iPhone 6 Plus, I made sure I got the mother load, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it's like, I think I spent like close to $1,000 for the phone. Yeah. But with this investment, you you know, it's an incredible tool. But you add on these attachments, which are so price point friendly, mm-hmm. and you've got a, a machine that's comparable to our 4K camera, you know, that our we call our video team can use. It's incredible. You've in fact, um, Filmic Pro, who's uh, in this app that I'm running right now, um, it's it's the best camera app out there. Um, they now are doing an upgrade that you can shoot 3K on your iPhone, 3K resolution. So now you've got a 3K camera on your iPhone. We'll have to get him on we, the show. We, he's yeah. great. He's a great guy. Uh, Neil Barna uh, up in, in San Francisco. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, in Washington, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, we'll be at 4k on our phones one day. It's just getting wow. there, you know. Wow. That, that's incredible. And probably pretty soon. So, well, I, I mean, I, for one, are pro- I'm probably gonna have to buy the next edition, next edition as we upgrade our phones, which will be very exciting. So let's talk about that. So, um, so you, you produced your first film at a pretty young age. So who are you, who would you consider your own mentors? And, and all that was by accident, honestly. I mean, like you said, I, was, I, I went to Wall Street and enjoyed that and, and got discovered there. Um, 
from a casting director who asked me to be in a, a, a an extra in a movie. Oh, and I go, yeah, I want to be an extra in a movie. What's Woo-hoo. that? You know, so um, I was in Rocky Five was my first thing. And then I just started doing a bunch of stuff and got my SAG card and did movies. Yeah, and then, cool. and then honestly, I got tired of driving across town from Pasadena to the West Side to do little, um, you know, uh, uh, interviews or, or auditions. So I go, damn it! I know how to raise money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into producing. And so I raised my first um, bunch of money. Um, we raised 2.8 million dollars in 45 days, and we made wow. 18 Shades of Dust, um, which Danny Aiello was in, the Academy Award nominee. And then it was funny. You look at that cast. The rest of the cast is pretty much everyone that was on The Sopranos, oh, eventually. Wow. Um, but Very it was a mafia cool. movie that we went and shot in New York, and. You know, um, Too I bad just, you didn't have this back then. Oh my God, the I would save a bazillion awesome. dollars. You know, I mean, it was we shot it for a hundred thousand. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was it was just a lot of fun. I, mentors in that. I mean, it's this is kind of funny, but um, I, I I was lucky enough to to know Steven Seagal um, when he was a big star, and I had been in some of his movies, and he, you know, he really sat down with me, and, and <laughs> before he became a reality uh, show star now. Uh, but and then told me, you know, this is the business, and it's, you got to go at it this way. And I was like, wow, okay, you know. And then from here, uh, you know, I just started wanting to be more and more involved in the business side of it. Um, I wasn't interested in being in front of the camera all the time, and and when I had no ambition to be a big star or anything, but I wanted to to make content, tell stories, and so that's why I got into the whole thing. So. Wow, that's incredible. So, I mean, to what you were making films with A-list celebrities, what made you decide to, t- to go and be a teacher? I had I got to a point where we were doing a film at Lifetime Television, so I eventually started um, wanting to, because I was getting a little older, I go, I need to have something a little more concrete in my life because the film industry is feast and famine. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, you get a script, you build it up, you build the, the peripherals around it, the money, and you make the movie, and then you start all over again, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And so un- unless you're working for the studios and whatnot. And so we, I was doing some stuff for Lifetime Television, executive producing, and we got to um, this one project um, that was a wonderful project. And it was, uh, it was about um, uh, like a Christmas story. Then they wanted to change it to an Easter story. And we just kept going through the ropes. And by the, when I first gave it to them, they were ready to green light it. And we didn't get that movie made for about uh, 13 months later. And so all that time, there's just no, you know, no income, nothing. And then they finally make it. And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of burned out on this whole business. <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to retire. I had saved up some money by that time. And I said, I'm just going to retire. My, we were, my wife wanted to have a baby. And so that was it. And, and, and so I was literally at home just doing my own thing, making my own. That's when I started doing my independent films on my own um, mm-hmm. with, with digital cameras you could buy out of the store. Wow. And, um, you know. Because you did the dream. I mean, you got this show onto Netflix and Block. So that was so the, the click, um, mm-hmm. it was called. And we did it for um, $10,000. And wow. we shot it all around in South Pasadena and the mountains, all just guerrilla shooting. Um, I would have to say that it was one of the most fun times I ever had, you know, and because it, it just showed me a, a time of leaving the film world where you had this expensive budgets and film processing to this little camera that I was out there shooting on tape and the images looked good and I would plug it into my computer, my laptop, which is blow, mind-blowing at that time, and I could import all the footage and edit right there on the, and, you know, it was just a transition, like a game changer. That, that I saw independent film going like gangbusters. So we did that, and, and I just shot it in like nine days and, wow. and edited it in a couple of weeks, and then we, um, you know, we got it out there. And it's funny, one of the kids that um, worked on it was a senior at USC at the time, Daniel Hashimoto, and he does a, a web he, – he graduated from USC Animation School, went to um, uh, DreamWorks uh, Animation, and um, – this is maybe, what, six, seven, eight years ago now. Um, he just left there, got a huge deal with United Talent Agency um, doing this. His son is um, Action Movie Kid. I don't know if you've ever seen those videos, but if you go to YouTube, millions of views. Okay. And he does. He has his son go places, and he shoots the video. Aww. And he makes these special effects like crazy. And so he's just, yeah, it's really cool stuff. Um, so, you know, it, so that was a fun time. So I, I was retired sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, on Facebook, my good friend from high school who I hadn't talked to in 20 years he, he messages me, hey, um, the, the media teacher quit, and we're looking for someone that would be, would you know anybody, you know? And, and I'm you're like, the perfect personality. And I go, God, yeah, I wouldn't mind teaching, and I'm yeah. pretty much bored you're at home. You're good with kids. You know? Yeah, so 
I went and visited her, and it happened to be a rival high school when I was growing up, which was really funny. And so I just I went into the class and looked around, and I just fell in love with these kids. They were asking questions, and I thought, God, I really want to do this. So I got into teaching and got my credential and, and just started teaching media. And we, we built it up from nothing to an award-winning uh, program, and, wow. and it was a blast. And I was very heartbroken to leave it in December, but um, – Next, you know, now my wife says, well, you're teaching the world now, so yeah. We'll yeah, see. <laughs> exactly. And this is going to keep you quite busy. I can't, I don't know how in prior to December I was doing both jobs because um, this is just overwhelming. I've it's never gonna worked. Get, it's going to get bigger. Okay. I, I just went, uh, there's a school, Temple City High School, local high school. Um, I went to career day the other day, which was interesting. Um, and it was, uh, as entrepreneur, I went and talked to them about, which is the first time I've done and they were saying, you know, what, what does it take? I said, you've got to be fanatical about what you're selling or what you're making. And this is your life. And mm-hmm. it, it just – and if you can't feel that way and do that, forget it. Don't even bother. Go right. get a job. Right. Um, you've got to use the analogy of, you know, the Greeks landed and they burned their ships at the shore and we're going to take that city uh, or we're going to die. Right, you know? right, and that's, right. And that's the, that's the mentality you have to have. Because that's the kind of um, effort that it needs. Yeah. I mean, what you created is so phenomenal. It's so smart. Um, let me ask you this. As a business owner, are you concerned about foreign competition producing what you do? So the big way to, I think, to stop that mm-hmm. is to create a brand. Right. And to really um, support that brand and get it, people out there that are fanatical about your product and that are using it. And to keep it, uh, you know... We, we will never be beat on price. I mean, I can't imagine that. Um, mm-hmm. So now it's like let's make better and better things and let's continuously educate them. Um, let's go, you know, schools, get them into schools early. I mean, we're in schools all across the country. It's our bread and butter uh, from high schools to major universities, um, our programs that are using this. Um, last time we were here doing the show, um, the head of um, University of Missouri's tech uh, communications called in and was talking about it and how they've shifted to this um, mobile journalism and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it's just really um, harnessing that, creating a community. Um, of course, we've got patents, <laughs> so you know, so that's as you know, as good as it gets. Um, but you know, it's yeah. I mean, that's that risk. But I think being um, uh, building a, a, a good brand makes people want to stick with it. Yeah, so great. So let's talk about what you do in social media. What are, how do you channel? I mean, obviously you've gotten this into to lots of schools. How are, how do you handle your social media presence? So we're very. So it's funny because it's literally the company and, and my my partner Tony, um, who's a full time uh, senior exec at Disney and Disney Legal. Um, he was one of the parents of one of my students um, uh, that I taught, and he saw what I was doing. Says, "I want to be your partner." Uh, <laughs> smart guy. Uh, so he, uh, so it's literally him, myself, my wife, who was a, a top production designer in the commercial industry for years. She is retired, um, doing this with me, handling schools full time, and then I have one student. So there's four of us doing this massive company, um, and it's just overwhelming. Um, and what was the question? I'm sorry. So I, I guess. Well, there's a couple different questions, <laughs> but I guess the, the main thing I want to know is like, so how do you handle your social media? Oh, social media. media. That's right. I'm sorry. Social media is me. <laughs> <laughs> I love social media. I'm a social person, as you can tell. And when this came out, I was like, my God, you know. This uh, is like an Instagram dream come true. It's it's for that. It's it's. I love this Periscope and this Meerkat mm-hmm. stuff, the ability so to, to get live anywhere and share things with you and the interaction that you can have. It's just amazing, the communication that we have now. Because the tripod and the mic mm-hmm. make it ama- amazing. That's it. Because we've meerkat and, and periscoped all over like when I was in New York but it's so difficult because like you said the audio the audio's wasn't bad. Really strong. Yeah, you have so many noises around you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you literally can plug in um, some lavalier mics to the iographer. Um, so both people that maybe you're interviewing someone, you can have the, the lavaliers on and get great audio. Um, and that's inexpensive as well. Uh, but, you know, with with Facebook, with Twitter, with I mean People say, why don't you do ads in, in magazines? And I said, are you kidding me? Why would I spend a dime on that when I have all this for free? Yeah. You know, and, and we have such an active community with all those people. And, and you're great... so lovable. So I think people <laughs> on social media that are truly good people like you, like it, we just naturally gravitate to. I think and, and that's the way everything is. And, and if you can um, make somebody love yourself, your product, mm-hmm. they're going to tell everybody else. And it just grows and grows. And, and that's what we see. I mean, we're getting most of our, our, tra- our hits on our website, our sales. 
I mean, the, the Miami Dolphins found me um, through Twitter. The Celtics are, Boston Celtics are my clients. So they use my stuff for uh, working out and, and just, you know, all kinds of things over there. Um, and I grew up in L.A., like you said, and I'm a diehard Laker fan. I bleed purple. So I'm kind of a trader, and I go wherever uh, people I use my I don't know. Gear. I think everybody <laughs> needs to have this. I mean, really, I, I can't really see that there being any boundaries to this because I, I can only see traveling the world with this. And, and not only that, the most important thing I keep coming back to is it's really affordable to be able to do really high-quality video. So eliminate, I mean, it doesn't eliminate, but it sure makes an even playing field mm -hmm. for those of us that, that are active and interested in creating new content. And I think content. what I wanted to pe people to learn is that it's not daunting. It's, you know, you're shooting video anyway. There's some really simple things you can do to make it a little better. And, and you know, that includes editing and, you know, things like that. And you can go as entry level as you want and as big as you want. I mean, we can set this up with, you know, Canon DSLR lenses on our iographer. There's, a, really? there's an adapter for that. You can add, you know, high-end $800 microphones if you want, you know I mean? So you can really go as big as you want. And, are you going to have programs or videos introducing different ways to... Yep. So, so like video tutorials and mm -hmm. whatnot. So I already have that. And, and I think once um, I was waiting for the summer to really just lock myself in a room and, and I already got the permission from my wife um, to really <laughs> sit down and do a ton of tutorials because I get requests all the time. Um, and I like doing tutorials. So I want to do just, you know, this is the A to Bs from content you know, ideas to delivery, you know. Yeah, that's what I, I would love to learn from you as like I, we certainly want to do it right and mm -hmm. get the good equipment, but but having good equipment and using good equipment mm -hmm. are two different things. Absolutely. So that would be very interesting to learn from. So any other financial advice for other investors? I mean, inventors, you had said, you know, basically live and die. This should be your baby. But anything else you've learned away? What I think is really interesting about you is not only were you a very successful filmmaker, you've been a teacher, but you also had the business sense coming from Wall Street. So you have a little bit of everything. So stepping back, if someone were to sit in front of you and say, Dave, I want to do what you do. I have a dream. What would be, like, your advice to them? And I actually, it's funny because as graduation this week for my last class of the kids that I taught, um, uh, I, I've told them all, you know, you need to go, when you go to school, um, take some business courses. I, I don't care what you're going to get into, take some basic business courses because you're going to need those. some point in your life, you're going to need that stuff. Um, but really, it, it's about, you know, picking something that you want. People need to find niches in their lives that – are not fulfilled by other things yet, right? Um, you can't be like a master of everything. I certainly can't. But I found a little niche in, in an area that I was an expert in, um, in film and video, and I knew all the technical aspects, and there was something missing, and that's why I made this. Had there been something there already, I would be teaching and we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, um, you know, really you've got to just find that little – and there's so many ideas out there that are untold yet that, that I think, you know, people should find. I mean, look at I – and mean, we were talking about this lady who was here earlier, May, May Lynn, was going to take Uber. I mean, who would have ever thought exactly, something right. like Uber would ever be it around, exists. you know? Right. Um, and so people need to find that. And I think the second thing is to really – budget, make a budget of what you want to do. And, and you know, this is what we're going to do. This is how much it's going to cost and beg, borrow and steal to get that money and go out and do it, you know. Absolutely. Well, awesome. This is an unbelievable. Thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate you being here. But most important, thank you for creating your product. Because I know for, for certain this is going to change how we make videos. And I can't wait to show you some of the videos that we're going to create from this amazing product. So, you know, definitely keep in touch with us, and we'll make sure to, to share all that with you. A huge thank you to Dave Pizzuto for coming here on the Renegade Millionaire Show. This is Winnie Sun, and I really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions pertaining to what we talked about today, always feel free to reach out. Easiest way to do that is through the website, winniesun.com, or Twitter, which I'm really active on, and that's Sun Group WP. And, Dave, how can we keep in touch with you? I answer every tweet. So, uh, at Iographer is Twitter. Um, at Iographer for Instagram, everything, and Facebook. I'm, I'm there all the time. So And let's spell it out for them. It's like videographer, photographer, I-O-G-R-A-P-H-E-R.com is our website. 
wonderful. And those of you who, who listen today, if you shoot your own video on your iPhone, please go ahead and tag me. I'd love to see them. I'm sure Dave would too. Yep. I want to see what you guys can come up with. And for the best video, I'll surprise you and send you something. So with that, uh, I will talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care.